Hey guys and welcome back. Today we are in the second chapter of this cobblestone wall material and as you can see the material is already finished. This is because we are making the material live on our free discord classes. But we're going to talk about that later. So today we're going to focus on the concrete. Yeah, so the concrete is one of the most important parts after the rocks as it's the background to our material and what's going to be holding our rocks in their place. Yeah, so as you can see here, yeah, I made the concrete completely apart from the stones, but I'm taking information from the stones. So let's take a look to it. First, I'm going to grab one of my last notes from my stones. Yes, I'm going to use a threshold. I'm doing this because I want to have the exact Space that is between just my stones. Now, if I create a threshold here, yeah, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna see that you're gonna have this result. That is the actual shape of the stones. And this is because it's in greater. Now, if we change this to lower, what's gonna happen is you're gonna, you're gonna have the negative space of that one. And it's gonna be really exact. And this is where we're gonna get things interesting. So we're gonna split this in two parts. So the first part is the one we have on top, and the second part is the part we have in the middle. So let's go first with the first part. So in the first part, as you can see, we're having the non-uniform blur. And the reason for the non-uniform blur is we wanted to have this kind of space, yes, in between the stones and the concrete, as you can see here. Yes, and you can see the gradient really here. If you use a HQ blur, this is not going to happen, yeah, because it's it has another way of transforming the information. So in here, as you can see, we are using two non-uniform blurs. The main difference is the intensity between them, which is going to have a big play between the gaps between the concrete and stones. Yes, so we are blending both of them with a value of one and copy using a pearly noise as the main mask for out for this part. Yes, this is the first step you have to do. Now, don't worry where this goes connected. We're going to look at it later, but let's get back. So the second part is where we actually start to make different shapes of our concrete yeah and most importantly that the edge variation we have around some parts around here yeah so let's go one thing at a time so from the threshold what i did i created two slow blurs just as we did with the non uniform blur we're gonna set these slow blurs to mean with a 32 value of samples and they're gonna have two different values just much like we did with the stones, one is going to have a higher value and the other one is going to have a lower value. So in this case, the top one is going to have 0.1 value with a min mode and the second one is going to have 0 0.035 value, yes, as a min. For their intensity or slope map, I'm using a clause 2 with a scale of 3, yeah? And I'm going to blend them together with a slope, with a, sorry, with a copy using a Gaussian noise, yes? This is going to allow us to have a mixture between the strong intensity, yes, and the lower intensity in here, yes, and adding for more, let's say, variation. So if I, for example, go here and put this to 0.25, you're going to see that this is going to change drastically in here. Yeah, you're going to see some edges are going to start to break more, and it's a really nice way of actually adding variation to the actual shape of our concrete, as you can see. Now, after that, what we're going to do is we're going to add another slow blur with another copy with another mask that we are using a pearl noise. Yes, the reason for this is because, again, I want a different kind of noise. So in the first part, we use a clouds 2. In the second part, we're going to use a clouds 1. Yes, because I wanted more variation to this. Yeah, so let me go here, pull this one up again. You're going to see the changes, yes, on the edges of our material, just, just go crazy with it. And you can really see how this is working for our material. I mean, it's working really good in some areas, other areas need a little bit more work, or maybe maybe too strong. So I'm gonna lower this to 0 0.25, yeah. I've, in fact, you know what? I'm just gonna leave it at 0.5, I really like it. There we go, see, it's looking good. So after that, we're, we're going to keep going on about the slow blur. Again, we're trying to add as much detail as we can. Yeah, and this is going to be done in different ways. So the first thing is we're going to create a clouds 2 and we're going to tile it because we want to use this not only as a slope input, but as a noise input as well. Yes, so we're going to use a multi-directional warp and warp it by 20 in the mode average in four directions. What this is going to allow is for a soft, soft detail of 
a workout soon. So if I input this, yes, and see the difference between one and the other, yes, you can see that this one has a little bit more of warping, as you, of course, but it has more interesting shapes, yeah? So we're gonna use this in our slope, yes, to just create this really strong detail that we have here. Yeah, in fact, let's see what happens right now. If I change this to 0.2, you're gonna see that what happens is that we are not anymore having that kind of organic feeling. So this is adding a lot of organic feeling and height variation to our material, yeah? So following up, we have the actual noise. So we are just going to mix the noises, yes? Meaning the main shape of our concrete and this kind of stone noise we made with using a copy, yes? And using the previous note to the slow blur as a mask, yes? because. There's actually not much to it. We just want it to be affected only on these places. We don't want to affect the, the places where the, the actual stone is uh, placed. So we're using with a copy a value of 0 0.72. Yeah, we don't want to go really hard on this. If you go directly on one, we're just going to lose all the detail we were working before. Yes, or maybe this is just going to be too much. Yeah, and there's not going to be much of an interest in the height. See? See how this has changed? Now, after that, we're gonna use a non-uniform blur again with a value of 0 0.5 with samples at maximum. The reason for this is we want this to be actually soft. We don't want it to be so hard. So if I remove this, for example, you're gonna see that things are gonna start to get quite messy and noisy, and we don't like that, yeah? I'm gonna keep it like this so you can remember it, uh, to be honest. Uh, but in fact, let's just go 0.4. For the moment, let's just relax a little bit this. There we go. So the next step is combining these first parts we created. So now we're gonna create the result of the edit shape plus the result of the blur shape. Yes, we're gonna blend them together using a copy, yes, at 0 0.57 value. Yes, we're gonna have a mixture between both of them because again, this is gonna be way too strong if we do both things together. In fact, if we do the both, combined, the result gets a little bit extra more shape, yes? And of course, we're gonna use a parallel noise that is styled to 32 in order to get the best result on the masking. Now, here is when things get interesting and it's where we are gonna build our details. Yes, and we're gonna build one detail at a time. So right here, I'm using the Grunge Concrete wall map, yes, that you can see here, that is from Substance Painter. Yes, you can check in the last video how you can take this, but most probably, if you want to do it short, you just go to the Substance Painter, look for this map, right-click on it, and go to Show in Explorer. Then you can grab the SVS file and drop it here, and you can just use it as any other node. So we're using a multiply node with a value of 1.4, oh, so, sorry, of 0 0.14. Yes, we don't want to go so strong because it's just going to break up everything we do. You see, it's actually quite strong and we actually don't want that. In fact, we could use some mask around here, let's say kind of like Gaussian noise, to make some changes in this, to be more softened, you know, and have other areas a little more strengthened and add some variation, and it actually looks really good. But I wanted to add some kind of overall detail to what we were doing, yes. So for the moment, I'm just gonna leave this just like you see it, yeah? So, Following up, we need to add the micro details, and this is the most important part for the concrete because in this case, the concrete needs these details. So let's take a look at this. So in our normal map, it was looking like this. After the grunge concrete wall, yes, it starts to look like this. Now with the next step, it's going to start to look more likely like this. So what we did here is we combined different, three different noises, yes, from Substance Designer, that are mostly moving around, creating dots and spots. Yes, like third one, black and white spots one, and black and white spots two. So I just use a copy, yes, blend node, between each of them. So first I blend the black and white spots one and black and white spots two, yes, with a value 4.6 or 0 0.46, yes. And then I did the same with the dirt to that result, but with a value 0 0.22. Yes, mainly because I didn't, this, the dirt node is more sharpened, yes, and in this case it's tiled by three. Yes, in the other cases this hasn't been tiled. So, yeah, 
that's how we are going to create this detail. And we're going to multiply it, yes, by our main shape. And as you can see here, it's a value 0 0.14. If I go higher than this, then the material is just going to look too sharp and we don't want that. Remember that we are building details. And the, the most important part of the detail is that it's not going to be everywhere. It's not going to call all of your attention. It's just going to be a detail. Yes, it's not part of a composition. So following up, we are going to start stacking more details, as you can see here. So we went from this to this. So we are adding that kind of like green to our material, those kind of mini stones that you can see in your concrete that you feel you can touch from, uh, from the outside. And for this, we did a technique that we have used before. We are using a black and spots two, yes, with a high pass grayscale to 0 0.2. This is to remove the contrast of the image, so that later we can turn the blacks closer to the whites. But let me do this again, so you can see. So this is our current image. If I move the blacks to the right, you're going to see how these areas disappear. Now, if you pull this back, you're going to see those grain starts to appear as well. Yeah. So, next one is going to be the destruction part. Yeah. So I created here, yes, a small section where I was trying to just destroy some of the things uh, on this concrete, yes, and are these kind of areas you see here where the color changed drastically as in these areas as well, yeah? So for this, what I did was I grabbed a salts one and inverted, yes, just, just to get this kind of salts pattern or kind of like gradient, yes, and I then warp this with a multi-directional warp, yes, at a value of 20, by using the same technique we used before with the clouds too, the one we did here for the noise, yeah? So after that, I used the levels to have a more specific mask, and I subtract that to our end result, and you can see here the difference in our height map, yeah? Maybe if I change this, no, let's just do it in the right one. So, so far so good. Yeah, but we need to add more detail to this because we have just added a destruct section. And if we just do the destruct section, there's nothing really more to it. It's just a part that is destroyed and there's no extra detail need. And concrete, when it breaks, it generates more detail. So let's see what kind of detail we built here. Yeah, just let me add a little more of this to make it more visible. So what I did today is, again, I used the noise created by the multi-directional warp and I use it with the deep base uh, noise we built. So I'm multi-directional warping the base node, the base noise, with the grunge that we created here, yeah? To this, I'm adding, yes, I'm multiplying, sorry, a, ba a grunge-based concrete because I want some extra variation to it, some extra feeling. Then I use an auto level to bring back up all the details we have built. And finally, a blur so this doesn't look so strong. Because if I lower this a lot, I'm going to start to see the actual result of it that might be way too strong for what we are trying to do here. See? But for the moment, as I said before, I'm going to leave it because with the color, it's looking really good. Yeah? We don't need to do everything really strong or really soft, we just need to find a really good place for it as well. So, how are we combining it? So I'm using the, the first mask for the distraction part as a mask for my, for my next detail. And I'm setting this to a copy with a value 0 0.82, yeah? Now, in our reference images, we have also over the concrete some small stones that are the ones that you can see around here. Yes, these dark spots around here, these are some stones we have created for this. So let's take a little bit the look of how these stones work. So the base is just as the big stones would make. Yes, it's basically a copy of this. If you want to see this first part again, you can just go to the last video and rewatch it where we explain exactly everything that is going on here. Yes, but the real part or the important part is here. So after having our stone pattern with an edge deck to make our small stones, we use a flat field to create four different flat field to gradient nodes. Each of these have an angle variation of one, but the random seeds change in all of them. Yes, you see zero, one, and two. And we are combining the four of them by using a min mode in our blend, yes, to get this kind of gradients in our stones. After that, we do some processing. 
In this case, we're using a levels just to better shape our stones. A blur, so they are not that sharp. And again, a levers just to make them look a little bit whiter and more circular, yes, as they should be. After that, we're using a splatter just, just to kind of tile our stones in a more organic way. And we have built here a part just to choose how many stones we want. So, for example, if I push these forwards, I'm going to have more stones around in my material, which is actually crazy because right now there are hundreds of them going around. Yeah, you can see them here. The more I push these, the more stones I found. Yeah. So for this, we just did a threshold on the splatter to get the exact position of the stone. And we repeated some steps we did in the last video. Flat fill, flat fill to random grayscale, and after that, a history grass scan with a contrast in one and the position value to choose the stones we want to use. Yeah. And we are multiplying this result by the splatter result. Yeah. And we are translating this into the concrete. How are we doing this? So we could just add the, the small stones into the concrete, but what's going to happen is that as we're using a blend node with a copy, what's going to happen is basically that the small stones are going to get some of the detail that comes from the concrete. And these small stones don't have that. So what you need to do is you're going to blur, yes, your concrete using the result of the stones as a mask as a blur map, sorry. So those areas don't have that detail. You can see it here, yeah? So once that is done, yes, and in fact, you should actually make this stronger. Yeah, there we go. So it's not that sharp, as you can see here. Once you have done that, you're just gonna blend this with a copy. In this case, I'm using 0 0.15 because it's enough for this. We don't need more than this, yeah? but that should be more or less the whole of it now the most important part how to blend them because right here we use a blend node but in here we're not using a blend node we are using a high blend yes and the reason why we are using a high blend is because first it's easier to use and second it gives us an output mask of the things that we are mixing and it's super exact so we're gonna plug in the bottom the height bottom the result of our concrete and stones and on the top, we are gonna we're gonna use the actual big stones, and we're gonna set our height offset to 0 0.58 and our contrast to 0 0.9. Yeah, and this is gonna be really important because if we change this to one, I think that in this case there's not gonna be much of a difference, but in other cases there might be a huge difference. Yeah. So as you can see from here, the height mask we have the rocks, but if I invert this we have the cement that is going to be super crucial for when we start with the base color that you see here, which is quite a mess as you can see because I'm still missing some parts, but again, this is already really close to finishing and you might even see that in the render. Now, this tutorial on the ones that are going to follow are just the tip of the iceberg. In here, you're just watching the material already finished and we are going all over the notes so you can copy this later. But the actual game of these materials is that we do a free discord class every friday where you can see it live and you can ask for a lot of questions and talk with me and ask me a lot of different things not only related to the material but where we're working but also the industry and portfolio sessions as well so if you want to join us just go into the description of this video there's going to be a link in there for a discord server Click on it, join us, and in the events, in the events section, you are gonna find when the classes take place. You are free to join, and I'm not asking anything in return. I just want to help you out to make better materials. I hope you like this chapter, and I'll see you in the next one to work out our base color and following up how to render the material.